have taught in several countries, uh, often with highly mixed groups of students in the classroom. But you personally have experienced studying in several countries. So let's talk about the differences we've seen, both in teaching and in learning in these different contexts. So let's start with, uh, tell me, what have you experienced? What was different from you, for you, and how, you, how did you experience it, and how did you deal with it from one different cultural context to another? My higher education started in my home country, Tunisia, with classmates belonging to similar cultural and often regional backgrounds. So there was little or no cultural clash between students, nor did teachers face serious challenges when it came to teaching style. However, when I first came to France, I met teachers and professors from different cultural backgrounds and noticed that teachers did encourage English students to use their own mother tongue while discussing, say, politics in the USA or the UK. So when I first discussed my research topic with the professor who invited me to France, uh, he started discussing things in French. Then he asked me whether I preferred to present a topic in English or French. As I was working on issues pertinent to the US society, I chose English. However, those at the meeting were speaking French and I did not feel myself really included and involved in the discussion, since I was the only one speaking English. Though I could have discussed my topic in French, I decided to use English, because as a university student in Tunisia, we were taught to speak English in the classroom, not Arabic, since we were studying English. I kept what I learned in Tunisia and brought it here with me to France. That's interesting. We know that France has a long history of imposing the correct usage of French, including creating an official academy for regulating the words that are used in the language. This influence may not be as strong as it once was some years ago because today we adopt so much from other languages, particularly technical terms and things of that sort, but language is a deeply rooted issue here. In Tunisia, titles are very important, as teachers and university professors should be respected, and calling them as doctors or professor is a sign of respect and a polite way to address them. So if you remember, when you first met, I kept saying doctor, dear professor, struggling with calling you George without using any titles. It wasn't easy, not part of what I grew up with. We see teachers as influential social superiors, and we treat them with a high level of formality. So I respect and see you as an ideal with valuable academic and professional experience. A friend from Kazakhstan also mentioned that at home she always used titles to address teachers, but she was quite shocked when coming to study in Finland to hear students there call teachers by their given names. So it's a challenge in various places. As an informal U.S. American, I often tell a student, you can just call me George. Well, easier said than done. I chuckle to myself when a student addressing me uh, stutters and stumbles uh, uh, through Dr. George, just struggling to admit, to admit that they can omit the formal titles like professor, doctor, and so on, and speak just informally. So, in a way, I feel very good inside when you tell me about your sense of this and the respect it means to you. It obviously manifests your good intention as a student and, and respect for me as a professor. Uh, yet, as human beings, I'm one, <laughs> I have my own cultural fear that this blocks us from becoming closer, perhaps, or more casual, or it gets in the way of being open with each other. And so inside, it sort of stays there, and I continually wish it were different. I know how to deal with it, of course, and I live with it pretty well, but that's the way our cultural, our deep cultural roots are often hard to, to pull out, you know? We, we, we pull the leaves off the plant, but we don't get the roots out. So. 
Another item uh, in this regard is that I'm not the kind of prof who stands behind a lecture platform and spouts off what he wants to say. Uh, rather, I tend to act a bit like a TV host. So I, I walk down among my students. I try to arrange the classroom in advance so that I have space to move about and I can get close to the students who are talking and working um, on whatever assignment I've given them or whatever challenge they have. So when I want to ask a specific student something, I try to do it in a personal space. That means I get closer. And there are students who like this and there are others who start changing their posture, stiffen up, and they clam up, they shut up because the prof is coming too close. I think the idea of personal space aligns with the concept of power distance. Power distance and personal space are definitely cultural. For instance, in Tunisia, the teacher should respect students' personal space and vice versa. However, as powerful members within the classroom, teachers are given full authority to determine their relationship with students which is most of the time distant and follows well-determined hierarchical norms. Personally, I think that within this high power distance context, teachers' knowledge becomes hardly questioned, making learning more of a top-down process that considers students as passive recipients. Globalization may have a positive effect in making people more open to adopt other models and approaches in teaching. However, despite this positive effect and the progress that we've been making, the hierarchical relationship between teachers and students persists because it's not only a teaching approach, but part of a larger cultural uh, approach to things, approach to people. And so when students go from a high power distance society to study in a place with its low power distance, uh, they struggle to voice their concerns, to express their opinions. They hesitate to ask questions, since where they were raised, teachers are given the last word in everything that they teach. So it doesn't make sense to question that or contest it or, or discuss it in any way. So this brings up the, uh, the, the topic of what is seen as strange or different and what sometimes may be judged as an actual offense socially or academically, and even penalized in some form. We need to be careful that we don't make our students penalized until they're aware of how they can manage the cultural challenges they face in a new environment. For example, it's my experience that one needs to be careful about touching. Uh, since I've been living in France, uh, my space between myself and the person I'm talking to is, has gradually shrunk and uh, often my touch is sort of automatic, a tap on the shoulder or a tap on the arm and so on. So I'm almost terrified when I go back to the United States and I reach out and tap somebody on the shoulder, it might be sexual harassment, you know, this is uh, serious stuff. So uh, I run as a, as a prof, I run some risks that are interesting, too. Um, there's a whole new challenge now of recognizing these diverse cultural dynamics of the, th of the things that are now going online uh, when we have virtual and hybrid teaching situations. Also, not only students, but professors in the same institution may come from different cultural backgrounds, some more formal, others less formal. Uh, Students may be puzzled by the different standards that they experience from the professors in one class and in another. So together, Anna and I have put together a short description of the cultural challenges in teaching and learning. So we invite you to check this list against your own experiences and what you've heard from others. Uh, note the items that you feel you'll have to pay more attention to. The important issue here is not to make others wrong, but to create synergies in the classroom and to appreciate and honor our differences. We can enrich each other by our teaching and our learning styles to the greater degree as we become more and more conscious of and actually use 
of the values and behaviors of other cultures that we encounter with each other.